it is Saturday, April 1st, 2023. It is April Fool's Day, I suppose. So um, I wonder if this puzzle will make fools of us in some way. Uh, I don't know. We'll have to find out. In any case, this foolish edition of The Daily Solve has been brought to us by Bradley Pirtle, Alex, Laura Saxon, and as always, the invaluable Timothy Mark and the indomitable Shoalmaster. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Salt Patreon campaign, for their generous support in bringing us this series, sustaining this channel. I really do appreciate that. And uh, thank you to everybody who has become a patron of the channel. And I'm glad to say I finally have caught up on my um, uh, mini puzzles, the uh, mini puzzle sort of pseudo speed runs. I ended up doing all three uh, outstanding weeks, so 21 of them in a row, which I solved yesterday and posted in a single video. And what, a, by strange coincidence, the constructor of all of those puzzles, Joel Faliano, is a co-constructor of today's puzzle, making this the 22nd consecutive Joel Faliano puzzle I have solved, uh, I will have solved by the time I've completed this one. So that is strange. Um, in any case, uh, what else? Oh, yes, you can become a patron um, by heading to patreon.com slash daily solve or clicking link in the description field there as a benefactor. You can get the daily solve. Let's check the crosses mug. And as a patron of any sort, you can get access to all the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, which includes that mega three week mini puzzle anthology, as well as what I also solved and posted yesterday, which was the March bonus puzzle themed around the luck of the Irish. That was the theme of the March New York Times bonus puzzle. So that's up there on Patreon as well. Um, all right. Do also please subscribe to the YouTube channel if you've not gotten around to that. And you can also join the Daily Self Discord chat server. There's a link in the description field underneath the video. So now let's get on to this puzzle. It is a co-construction by Wina Lou and Joel Faliano. So Joel Faliano is the longstanding uh, mini puzzle constructor for the New York Times. And Wina Lou, I think, is an assistant puzzle editor for the New York Times. And she has also constructed a number of mini crosswords when there were there was a few weeks uh, of sort of rotating around dif different uh, guest constructors of the mini crossword. In any case, Joel Faliano is also responsible for several dozen New York Times crosswords uh, to date, and Wina Lou for a large handful, I think nearly 10. So let's start solving and see what they have in store for us on April 1st. Pains in the you-know-what. Imps, maybe? Sort of irritating children, perhaps? Something like that. Check. Mm, not sure. Now, one side in the British Parliament. One side in the British Parliament. Is that, I'm not sure if that means sort of one of the houses of the British Parliament, so the Commons and the Lords, or one side meaning the sort of majority party and the opposition. I don't know, yeah, that's annoying that I can't infer what that's asking for. Um, I mean, I guess it could mean one of the parties, which current current opposition party, Labour, one side. Maybe that's what, this, what it's getting at, I don't know. Awkward things at family movie night. I don't know. I probably shouldn't put this in. I'm, I'm not quite sure I understand the clue, so probably shouldn't do that. Uh, what about these crosses? Notoriety, infamy. No, <laughs> not that. Word that means the same thing, even with several letters added. Monologue? You could add U-E, and it would mean the same thing. Feels like a real stab in the dark. I haven't a clue if that's Correct. Pikachu's cry in Pokemon. Oh, P Pikachu just says Pika, right? Pika. I don't know. Check. Yeah, I'm not sure about that either. Okay, there's something. I'm trying to, <laughs> because I'm predisposed to thinking there could be something tricky going on today. I'm wondering if I'm, if I'm already missing something, but I'm not sure. When doubled, really like. Wait a second. Sorry, I just looked at 17 and 18 across. And I have a strange suspicion about these. You can double the word like to mean really like, to like like somebody and sort of, I don't know, I think of that as almost sort of preteen 
sort of euphemistic language. And then scientific name for the American bison, I think is bison bison. So <laughs> I think there's some sort of strange doubling thing going on in today's puzzle, maybe. Oh, although one side in the British Parliament does look like Labour with that B there. That's good, at least. Interesting. Oh, and this is Pika something. Oh, maybe it's Pikachu, Pikachu? Oh, right, okay. <laughs> this is some kind of crazy theme that's breaking a fundamental rule of the New York Times crossword, which is that you shouldn't have an answer that is already in the clue. This is absolutely bonkers. <laughs> uh, notoriety, ill fame or something? Um, cochon de blank, suckling pig. Um, I actually don't know. I don't know what that is. Um, bomb. Okay, now, now I have to figure out, is there... <laughs> Is there a way to predict which of these clues will match with these sort of funny answers? Error of Batman on 1960s TV. NBC or ABC? I think, I don't know why. I think if I had to guess, I would guess ABC, but couldn't really justify that. Word that means the same thing, even with several letters added. Well, it definitely wasn't what I said. Oh, there is a question mark, actually. So the answer I put in monologue was a straightforward answer to this clue, whereas the question mark here means there will be something sort of punny about it. So, but I don't quite understand what that is yet. Notoriety, ill fame, is that valid? Oh, fabric for a sweater, mohair maybe? So if this were an E, send off. That person sent off, they erupted. Is that valid? I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm not not confident about that. This is fascinating. <laughs> I'm in doubt about everything. I'm, every time I encounter a clue, I'm, I'm sort of doubting it. Punch something. Uh, rum, you could make up an uh, alcoholic punch out of rum, commonly. As she said, 2022 film, that's an easy one. A uh, country whose postal service has a special letters to God department. Uh, surely Italy, right? I would think. I don't know. Maybe that's not right, actually. Because maybe Vatican City would be more likely in that case. Land bordering 26 across. Oh, maybe this is Vatican and this is Italy? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I could imagine there being other countries that had this, so I, I, I'm not... I don't know that as a fact, so I'm not sure I'm going to put it in yet. Word with box or car, cable box or cable car. Wilcox, Stoddard, and Howard's End. I actually, actually don't know Howard's End, believe it or not. Comparatively unpleasant something or er, comparatively meaning you know, relative to something else, so more unpleasant. Um, testier isn't really quite unpleasant per se. Oh, if it were I-E-R, though, this could be Italy. I guess the land border. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm just still going to wait till we have crosses on that. Disgust. Odium. I was thinking of this as a verb initially, but it could be a noun as, as well. Uh, you evinced disgust, odium, and revulsion to something. Spanning multiple time zones. Um, what is a word that means that? Vast, I suppose, in the sense that sort of Russia contains many time zones, for instance, because it's so vast. Awkward things at family movie night. Oh, love scenes. Oh, right. That's, a, that's fair enough. Uh, rock type emo. <laughs> the official rock music subgenre of the New York Times crossword is certainly emo. Uh, we haven't seen it in several weeks, I don't think. So there we go. It's back. Figure with two hyphens. Oh, social security numbers in the United States identifying... Numbers in the U.S. are typically separated with two hyphens. One member of TV's Mythbusters. Oh, right. I, I, I saw this clue, for, you know, when I was looking at a different clue, and I didn't click on it because I didn't remember this because I've never actually seen Mythbusters, but I am aware of it. And now that I see these in the grid, I remember that one of the hosts is Adam Savage. So there we go. So Evie, maybe, is the Wilcox daughter, perhaps? 
who cares if this happens? Who cares if that happens? I'm sorry. Uh, let let them or let it or something. Probably let it. Who cares if that happens? Let it happen. Japanese export beginning in 1982. Um, I don't know what this is referring to, strangely. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's not let it. Number one, fans. Ego egoists. I guess it is let it. Um, in other words, fans of number one, fans of yourself. Okay, this is not Italy. I was right to be skeptical of my first thought. So comparatively unpleasant is nastier. Oh, Israel. That makes sense also. Uh, so what is this? Oh, Sentra, the Nissan Sentra? Wow, that's a specific reference. Japanese export beginning in 1982. I wonder, out of all the people who have solved this crossword today, you know, the I don't know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions, I have no idea how many people solve the New York Times crossword every day, but I wonder how many of them will have known this cold. Parent company of WhatsApp, it's Meta, the company formerly known as Facebook. And Grinder is a, a mill, a Grinder. Not sure. They have lots to deal with. And what is this send off? Oh, right. I thought this maybe could be erupt. Oh, okay. I've got a. This little area is sort of almost fully contained. Let's see if I can get anything to confirm or deny or erupt. Fourth president after Adams. Was it also Adams? The John Quincy Adams, maybe? I'm wondering in this goofy crossword. Send off. Yes, exude. That's better than erupt. To send off a kind of air, to exude it. So word that means the several things means the same thing, even with several letters added. A mail, oh, a mailbox. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> you can add several letters to a mailbox. And of course, it still means mail. The word mailbox still means mailbox. Very good. Very clever. Bomb, to flame out, to sort of fail. And to check out, oh, to check someone's power, to stem their power. There we go. So cochon de lait. Oh, to milk. Oh, suckling in the milk in that sense. Okay, I get it. Cochon de lait, suckling pig. All right. Uh, pig of milk, I guess, literally. Uh, there we go. So notoriety was ill fame. That's what I wanted it to be for some reason, and I just didn't, didn't, wasn't confident in that, um, that guess. Cell info. I don't know if this means a cell in the sense of a jail cell or a biological cell or a cellular telephone. I don't know. Grounds for an apology, um, a sin or a, hmm. Buddha is often depicted with one. Oh, I'm not sure about that either. Uh, cry heard on April Fool's Day. Um, I don't know, is it uh, got you or something? I mean, is you know, something that essentially means that. Um, experience of feeling unfamiliar with something that's actually quite familiar to you. No, I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I don't think this is, oh, well, I guess I don't know if this is one of the theme ones. Um, go into, enter into. So info, they have lots to deal with. They have lots to do. People who deal with lots. Hmm. Break down while reading. Parse. So I think we're meant, to, when we read this, we're first meant to think of sort of having an emotional breakdown maybe while reading, but I think maybe what it means is break down, in other words, deconstruct a sentence, for instance, parse it. Uh, high quality, top, top something, probably top something. They have lots to deal with. Something tors or tors? Tors grinder. Oh, a molar, a tooth. There we go. Oh, cry heard on April Fool's Day. April Fool. Ah, <laughs> oh, okay. Yes, there it is. Extremely good central entry to this grid. Cry heard on April Fool's Day is, of course, April Fool. There we go.
Excellent. Well, good job by these constructors. This is absurd. Buddha is often depicted with one. Oh, a halo. There we go. Okay. Grounds for an apology. A snafu. Situation normal. All fouled up. Or something stronger than fouled in U.S. military slang. Cell info. Oh, DNA or, or RNA? DNA, I guess? Um, go into, to delve into something. Oh, realtors. They deal with lots of property. Um, lots in the sense of a lot of land, as opposed to uh, lots meaning many. Up could be risen, maybe. I'm up. I've ri I'm risen. Uh, this doesn't look great. Oh, no. Maybe it is. Experience of feeling unfamiliar with something that's actually quite familiar to you. So this is the uh, opposite of deja vu, right? So, okay, I actually didn't know this phrase, but I can um, I can reverse engineer it from French. So deja vu means essentially um, already seen, uh, whereas jamais vu, the opposite of that, would be uh, never seen. So... So deja vu, you feel as though you've seen it before, even though you likely haven't. In this case, it's the opposite. You feel as though you've never seen it, even though you have. Okay, jamais vu. I don't think I've heard that used before. Wides, but, but I believe that it's a, a real phrase. Uh, widespread, rife, you could say. Corruption is rife. It's widespread. Downside of checking a bag on an aircraft could be of the fee, the check bag fee. And some auto accessories, I'm not sure. Noted employer in Claremont, Kentucky. Um, I'm just taking a guess at this. with Because of the J and the length, and that I think Jim Beam whiskey is from Kentucky. I'm wondering if that's, that's it. And sort of noted in the sense that Jim Beam is a kind of famous whiskey brand. A uh, famous American whiskey brand. Some auto accessories. So I'm going to try it and see if the crosses work. Federal Fiscal Group. Mm, not sure. Subject of a Kahindi Wiley portrait in the National Portrait Gallery. Oh, and, oh, Obama. Oh, oh, that must have been Obama's official portrait artist. And then hit Will Smith song from 1997's Men in Black. I think it's the song Men in Black. There we go. So this this is going to be another one of these then, right? Spiny-leaved plant in tropical and semi-tropical climates. Is it aloe aloe? I'm not sure. Language common to a profession. Jargon or idioms or Argo maybe, Argo maybe, I don't know, not seeing it. The fact that humans use only 10% of our brains, e.g. Oh, that's not true. Uh, and that's why fact is in quotation marks, okay. Um, what is it? A, some kind of myth or something? Land bor Oh, land bordering Israel. Why can't I think of this? That's infuriating. Uh, become less brilliant. Oh, fade. So either literally or metaphorically. Symbol of forgetfulness in Ishiguro's The Buried Giant. Oh, this is uh, Kazuo Ishiguro. Um, oh, I read this. Why can I not think what this is? Um, is it a mine? No, it's not a mine. That's not. Uh, this is so frustrating. Uh, hmm. The fact that humans use only 10% of our brains. Brew whose red and white look... Oh, sorry, this is the mist. This was a sort of like... Uh, Ishiguro, the, the, the British novelist, uh, this is sort of deals with kind of English mythology and, and things. Uh, Brew whose red and white logo is inspired by billiard balls. I'm not sure. Hmm. Okay, what else can I solve? Puppeter Baird, who performed for The Sound of Music. Not sure. Uh, I'm sure there are clues I've not yet seen. Stop kidding yourself. Be real, you might say. Uh, herd of cattle as a what of... Herd is to cattle as what is to snakes. A den of snakes, I suppose. And what terp, uh, Terpsichore or Terpsichore was the goddess of in Greek myth must be dance. 
And then a ball game is bocce, maybe? Voyage Proceeder. Oh, bon voyage, you might say, to wish somebody a good voyage. High quality top end. There we go, as opposed to low end. And annual book prize. Oh, the, the Booker Prize, which I think Kazuo Ishiguro has won. Um, which used to be, I think, just for British or maybe British and Irish novels, but now I think is for any English language novel. Art pieces that date back to the Han Dynasty. Um, I'm not sure. What are art pieces that start with food? Hmm. Language common to a profession. Oh, right. Okay, I looked at this. What have I not seen yet? Non-Jewish person from the Yiddish. A goy? Going well. Uh, capital of Sao Tome and... Princip. Um, well, it also starts with Sao, clearly, so that would be pretty common in, in Portuguese. Uh, not sure. Champs can precede this. Oh, <laughs> Champs can precede this, the Champs-Élysées in, in French, the Elysian fields, but, but uh, you know, it, in this, it more commonly refers to the major sort of shopping street in Paris. Okay. Spine leafed plant. Oh, right. Spine leafed plant. I think it is probably aloe aloe. I think that is, I think that is the name. Um, blank name. Oh, so <laughs> Sao Tome is the capital. It was in the clue. There we go. All right. I think that's the answer. Uh, <laughs> I'll never, I, I, yeah, I'll have solved this puzzle and never quite internalized I'll never remember to keep assuming that this might be true for any answer. Anyway, uh, let's see. Going well. Going well. Regular? Oh, you're going well. You're regular, I see. <laughs> Slightly messy clue. Number of stripes on La Bandera de España. Uh, tres. There we go for three. Um, I assume that is the flag of Spain. Um, I don't actually know Bandera, but I, I assume that's what it is. But let me know if I'm wrong. Okay, blank names. To name names is a common phrase, which is reduplicative with its clue. Um, and language, oh, can't, right. Yes, a can't is a, is a kind of, you know, you hear about sort of thieves can't and things like that, particular um, kind of collections of words that are specific to a profession, as the clue says. Okay, we, how, how do we finish this this puzzle? The fact that humans use... No, this doesn't look right. DCE, that looks, that looks completely wrong. Oh, I don't know which of those is incorrect. Booker is surely correct. Oh, and I didn't even pick up on the fact that this is another one of those where the book, the, the answer has part of the clue in it. There we go. So annual book prize, Booker. That would never happen in a normal crossword. But it's April Fool's Day. Okay, so, hmm. Lebanon, probably? This land bordering Israel, actually? Does that give me an alternative to this area of the grid? Oh, something beer. Brew whose red and white logo is inspired by billiard. Oh, Amstel. Amstel beer. Okay, I can't, I don't really remember what the Amstel logo is, but that must be the answer. So that does look like fade. So what is going on here? Is it not? Bill Baird, maybe? I don't know. I don't know this, the name of this person. Oh, this looks like it could be... So oh, science, right. The fact that humans use only 10% of our brain. Some sort of science. Oh, so this wasn't fade, but fain. Is that right? That doesn't seem right. Wane. If something wanes, it decreases. Woodcuts. That makes much more sense than food cuts. I was wondering about this art pieces being food something. I was thinking food dishes or something. I mean, maybe, but that just seems odd. Right, I should have second-guessed it. So to become less brilliant is to wane. Fade would have been a valid answer, but of course not in this grid because it doesn't fit the crosses. Okay, so fad science maybe? the fact, Maybe, does that mean this is true, but sort of, I thought this was actually not the case. Oh, bad science. Right, okay, that's more likely. 
it charges for cleaning a Roomba. Uh, it doesn't charge you money. Well, I guess you pay up front for it. And then after that, um, it charges itself, charges its battery, I suppose. Some auto accessories are rims as in uh, of wheels. And then they go from 540 to 1700 informally. Oh, AM bands in the radio, I suppose. And then, ah, the Federal Fiscal Group, the OMB, the Office of... Oh, I know what this is, and I can't think. Because there's the British equivalent, I think roughly British equivalent, the Office of Budgetary Responsibility. But what is the... I can't remember what the, the U.S. thing is here. Um, it's OMB. I, I just can't remember what it stands for. <laughs> anyway. No. Oh, no. Oops, I put, it, I put that in wrong. Sorry. There we go. Okay. April Fool's. <laughs> I got the puzzle right, it turned out. Um, there we go. Uh, that was a very silly puzzle that took me, I think, maybe longer than it should have to catch on to what was going on. It was the combination of like-like and bison-bison that, um, that gave it to me. So very well, a, a very well, well-played joke by Wainalu and Joel Faliano. I really enjoyed that, um, despite sort of struggling with it at times. Um, how long did it take you to catch on to what was going on here? <laughs> and there were there were a few cases, I think, like Booker. I mean, there might have been other cases that I just didn't notice or didn't remember that um, sort of, I guess this isn't expressly what the theme, well, I don't know. I don't know if this puzzle can be said to have a theme or to have sort of just, I guess it does, because it's it, it's themed around April Fool's and it's breaking a, a rule of the crossword. Um, in any case, there were some where I, when, at the time I solved it, I didn't even realize that the, the clue is breaking a rule. So that makes me wonder if I missed any others because uh, symmetrical to Booker is labor, but I don't see I don't see why this breaks a rule in the clue in any particular way. So they must not be fully sy symmetrically disposed or this is kind of just a minor thematic entry because the main ones that double things are symmetrically disposed. And what else was there? So it was like bison, bison, men in black, aloe, aloe. I guess men in black, just referencing the clue. What else? There were some downs, I think, as well. Oh, I don't know. Maybe not. Oh, Pikachu, maybe. Yes, Pikachu's crying Pokemon is Pikachu. Um... Yeah. Oh, yes, the cap capital of Sao Tome and uh, Príncipe Sao, to Sao Tome. Okay, so those are not symmetrically disposed. Okay, so so they're not all. Uh, in any case, a very clever puzzle by Wainalu and Joe Faliano. Well done to them. I enjoyed that. Hopefully you did as well. And now let's discuss a few clues from yesterday's puzzle. Now, uh, yesterday's puzzle, I think, was thought by most people to be a particularly difficult one. And I wonder if this one ended up on Saturday. Well, clearly this one ended up on Saturday simply because it was April 1st. I think in normal circumstances, with respect to difficulty, yesterday's and today's puzzles would have been in opposite order. But also today's puzzle wouldn't have been on a themeless day anyway, probably, if not for April Fool's Day. Uh, so in any case, that was one of the more common comments on yesterday's puzzle. Uh, here are some more. Spikel thing points out the fairly, what would have been an obvious fact if I thought about it for more than two seconds, that Riverdance was not and couldn't have been the Eurovision Song Contest entry for Ireland in 1994 because it is not a song. There's no singing in Riverdance. Uh, it is a dance. The contest was being held in Dublin, Ireland, and Riverdance was the interval act. Ireland's entry in 1994 was Rock and Roll Kids, sung by Paul Harrington and Charlie McGettigan. They were the winners of the contest, making this win the third time in a row that Ireland had won. That is extraordinary. Um, Kathleen Quinn points out that Embassy Row, I was wondering what embassies had to do with Row. Embassy Row in Washington, D.C. usually refers to the area between Massachusetts Avenue Northwest between DuPont Circle and Observatory Circle around the 20th Street Northwest to 37th Street Northwest. So there we go. Makes perfect sense. And Gary Britton added that many capital cities have rows of embassies. Nix Hicks explains that Cantab derives from the term Cantabrigian, and uh, and that refers to um, someone from Cambridge or from the University of Cambridge or from uh, 
Cambridge, Massachusetts. Well, so for either from Cambridge, England or Cambridge, Massachusetts, or uh, someone who attended Cambridge University in Cambridge or Harvard University in the other Cambridge. And I knew that about Canterbridge, and, and for some reason, I just wasn't able to cant Cantab. It just sort of sounded like its own thing, and I wasn't able to connect it at all in my mind, uh, very frustratingly. Uh, in any case, the uh, what I didn't know was the derivation of it, which Nick Six also explains here. Um, it is based on a sort of Latin adaptation of the Anglo-Saxon name Cantabrig, the form, you know, the older Anglo-Saxon name of Cambridge. And in Cambridge, United States, the name Cantabrigia appears in the city seal and uh, is abbreviated to Cantab in the seal of the Episcopal Divinity School located therein. Uh, so that's very, very interesting. And I wish I would have been able to infer it myself, but thank you for the explanation. Andrew Harrison Way explains that a part song is a piece of music for multiple voices, usually the uh, SATB, the um, soprano, alto, tenor, bass, choir, based on a secular text. While this would cover a very broad category of music today, for instance, all college a cappella arrangements, it was much more niche when it was developed in 18th century England. Some of the more famous entries in the genre set poetry by English literary greats like Tennyson, set by Elgar, and Shakespeare, set by Vaughan Williams. So thanks for that. I'm sort of surprised I didn't know that. I probably learned that at one point when I was actually studying music in university, but uh, I couldn't bring it to mind. So thank you for that. And those are the clues I had, well, the comments I had about clues from yesterday's puzzle. So that wraps up today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. I did. I'll be back tomorrow for the Sunday puzzle, which will be, well, I guess another themed puzzle. It's unusual to say that on a Saturday, uh, but we will find out what's going on then. Please join me at that point. But until then, do have an excellent remainder of your Saturday. Take care. Uh -huh.